Okay, um, I grew up in the Bronx where we didn't have such uh, good skies, but I eventually fortunately got a job with an optical company called Ferrand Optical where we did a lot of R&D and where I learned uh, optical design. And one of them, as an amateur astronomer since I was a kid, uh, of course, I, I was always interested in not only building telescopes, but uh, doing some astrophotography. Fortunately, one of the projects the company had was a military project where they had a lens called a super, a super Pharon, which was a three-inch um, three focal length, 76 millimeter, F0.87. So you talk about fast speeds. Well, it occurred to me as an amateur astronomer that that would make a very interesting photographic lens beyond surveillance and other uses. So I had it adapted to a standard camera body and in those days, this was in the uh, early 50s, we only had Kodachrome 10, if any of you can believe that. So I was using Kodachrome 10 and I had the dream of doing an all-sky color uh, panorama using Kodachrome 10 and I took a bunch of pictures, deep sky objects, the whole areas in the Milky Way. I had one problem though, at f0.87 it's impossible to hold the film plane perfectly flat with ordinary film. So we'd get bubbly areas out of focus. So it was kind of a good try. I did though have the chance to visit Mount Palomar where uh, William Miller did the first great color astrophotography with the 48 inch Schmidt at Mount Palomar. And I had the opportunity to show him what I was doing with a little F 0.87 the camera on wide angle color photography. So I had since done some more photography with various uh, telescopes uh, and then I rebuilt my telescope into a uh, 12 inch f5.3 where I did some uh, variety of astrophotography and in fact I got a, a lunar eclipse photo in 1968 published in the Encyclopedia Americana. So I, I've been doing it for a while, but finally the, the last astrophotography I really did, except for occasional <coughs> pictures of comets with, with newer equipment, but the last real deep sky image I took was on ASA uh, 100 plus X film. I took an 80 minute exposure of the double cluster hand guided from my driveway. And I got three arc second sharp stars. And after I did that, I said, I did it. I did it once. That's enough. Goodbye. Then going many years later, when we developed the Teleview, and I needed a telescope to check out our eyepieces, like the Naglers and so on. I designed and built and patented our Petzval telescope, which was a 5-inch f4 with an iris diaphragm. But I never really used that for astrophotography. However, now that CCDs have really come of age gangbusters, it's forced us to really do everything we could toward getting that wide field, that performance over the whole field for these small uh, pixel sizes and so on. And an example right here is a picture of the Rosette Nebula, uh, which was taken uh, by uh, Tim Puckett with one of our 127 IS telescopes. This is a two-frame mosaic. And this was selected by uh, NASA APOD, Astronomy Picture of the Day, for I think it was last year, if I'm not mistaken, and maybe it was the year before, but it was the, and this is appropriate at the time we're speaking, as the Valentine's Day uh, picture, as the, uh, the great, uh, what do they call it? The long stem rosette for Valentine's Day. So the whole idea is my interest 
is to have instruments that are at the state of the art, both visually, for wide angle, travel, high power planetary, and imaging at the same time. And if we move, move over here, I can show you a prototype of the next production run of the 127 IS. So we happen to, of course, set up visually for the daytime with a bino view, but this is the 127 IS, the same instrument that took the previous, the picture you saw of the uh, rosette. So if anybody is interested and they have any questions, we have a lot of stuff on our website, including the complete manuals of all of our instruments. And if anybody has any questions or suggestions, uh, I'd like to hear from you. There's one other thing uh, we're doing now. Uh, we have a new paracore coming out that will work beautifully down to F3. And it's also capable of being used for imaging. So uh, you'll hear more about that probably by the time of uh, NEEF, uh, except for the few people I run into down here, these beautiful skies, and uh, we can talk and demonstrate and have fun. So this is the best hobby in the world. And one last point, if everybody was an amateur astronomer and spent time looking at the sky, where would we have time to go to wars, people to fight on this beautiful planet, wonderful universe? This is nuts not to be an amateur astronomer. <laughs> so with that, I, I welcome all of you to look at our website, and you can always call us for any questions. Thank you.